Hello and welcome to Microcap. Today we're going to be doing high side PWM control. So this takes a a high side load switch as its starting form, and the only difference that we're going to do is we're going to change the uh, the voltage signal across the gate and the source. So uh, if you remember, the gate and the source has to have a negative difference across it in order for it to be on. Now, uh, if the, the tricky part with this that's different from the low side PWM control is that you're not switching between ground and a voltage that's higher than the threshold. You're switching between the voltage at the high side and something that is lower than the threshold. So this voltage may be difficult to create depending on what this battery voltage is, and I'll show you that. So if we have a drive signal of 0 to 5 volts, here, 0 to 12 volts, what we can expect is when it, when this is at 12 volts, this will be matched, so this will be off. No current will flow through the, the load resistor. But at ground, this is going to turn on, which is fine for now. So if we run the analysis, we're going to get something like this. Okay, very similar to what we saw with the, um, uh, with the low side load switch. Um, here we have a signal that comes in, and then we have the opposite effect. Uh, that occurs. So if you notice, this is held to ground. So whenever this is going to be up, that's going to be off, so it's still going to be ground. And whenever this is going to be ground, this is going to be battery that's attached to that. This high side switch turns the access point from battery onto the load, whereas the voltage here is always going to be ground until you get battery. So if we run the simulation again, just have to explain that. Sometimes the, the inversions can be kind of weird. Uh, you see the voltage goes up, the voltage actually goes down across the load, uh, and then the current follows that. So the current is going to follow the voltage in this case. Here we have 12 milliamps of current, and it's going 75% of the time in its duty cycle. So 75% of 12 is going to be 9. And we can calculate that with the scope. So if we want to go into measurements, if we want to look at an average measurement, we can go into average. It's already right there for me. It might not be that way for you, but you have current and you have load resistance there. And uh, then I rerun re the simulation, and then we have 9 milliamps of current. So that's how that works. Now, the, the difficulty is what happens if the battery voltage is increased, but our drive voltage is not increased. So let's say this is 25 volts, which it could happen. If you have a 20 volt, 24 volt circuit, which are becoming more popular now because of, uh, of the weight that reduces the harness size, wire size in vehicles, and uh, it is an overall better power distribution means in the same way that 120 volts from, uh, from the transmission line is better than if they had done that through DC or direct current. So what we have now is an interesting situation. This is going, the drive signal is going from zero to 12, but the battery voltage is 24. So even if it reaches 12 volts here, the difference is still going to be minus 12. So this is going to be essentially on all the time. That's that's what we should expect from this. Okay, so as you can see, there's some kind of weird effects that occur. It like attempts to go low, but, but it can't. And so it goes back up. So if you notice, the scale is basically from 23.97 to 23.99 volts. So this is 24 volts. It's at 24 volts and it's at 24 milliamps the entire time. So we might as well not have that MOSFET there. We might as well just have a straight line. So that's one of the things that is difficult with respect to high side switching is that you have to get a voltage that is going to match that. Uh, it's going to have to be 24 volts and it's not going to have to be zero because zero is too much. So if zero is applied here, the usually gate source thresholds uh, for maximums are plus or minus 20 volts. So you putting zero here means that there's a, a difference of now minus 24, which is way too much. So you would blow out that gate to source junction. So you need to be able to provide a source that does something like this that goes from 12 to 24 volts in order for this new situation uh, to work uh, the way that you would expect it to. You know, we're, we're back to our kind of normal expectation, but the, uh, the difficulty, especially with automotive applications, is that um, your customers typically will want the voltages to be much higher than your nominal operating. So if your nominal operating is like 12 or something like that, they may say, like, we need to be able to operate still at 18 volts or 24 volts. 
and have everything be okay. So in order for you to meet that criteria, you have to have some type of variable drive system uh, which is going to account for those kinds of differences. So that's why you don't see high side uh, switching as much as you see low side switching is because you don't need to do um, so much uh, adjustment. Now, there are high side switching that you can do with end channel MOSFETs and you need charge pumps to do that. That's another type of variable drive system uh, that works for that. So anyway, that's, uh, that's high side uh, PWM control uh, for, um, for this.